That's right, this is 10 Days on Icarus. And each day, while surviving and prospering, I'll be delivering gold-level tips until I run out of them. And on top of that, each day I'll dedicate less and less airtime, so the pace of this video will increase exponentially until on day 10 it is just a meaningless blur. You are most welcome for that. That's right folks, you are going to carry Alk on your back. You are going to rip through the atmosphere on your drop pod. You are going to annoy bears. You are going to admire the sky and the darkness through dramatic screen zooms timed to music. You are going to swim in your clothes. You are going to shoot literally thousands of arrows and you will mercilessly kill baby deer. You will get chased by bears. You will run through tall foliage and jump off cliffs and then you will get chased by more bears. Well not really but it makes for a dramatic start. When you start Icarus you've always got to select your character on this screen and you will also have a loadout, any other equipment that you've purchased previously you can put on here and take down on your drop pods that's some of the stuff from previous games, I don't have it for this mission you also have your workshop, this is where you can purchase equipment you can research it and then build it and actually take it down with you or bring it down to the surface later have on your home screen you have four options, you have your resume, new, load and join on the new screen you have open world, let's click on that. I have some DLC so I have some extra maps but you have three main worlds here, these are all different maps and then you have the missions options, each one of these are singular drop missions where you will go down, complete the mission and then once you've completed it you go back up to the spaceship and then the next mission you go down again and start and do it all over again, rinse and repeat. And finally there are outposts, outposts I should say, these are beautiful little maps where you can build to your heart's content. This is for those that want to make those lovely, lovely buildings. You can also choose what type of game you want to play as in easy, normal, hard. Hard of course has everything is a bit trickier, things cost a bit more, there's uh, animals are a bit more powerful, all that type of stuff. I'm playing on normal mode and I'm playing Olympus Open World and on this you have four different zops, drop zones, or five actually, and I'm selecting Riverlands. Once you select that you go down in your dropship and then of course we commence. Before we get started, the tilde key is what turns your HUD on and off, good for those dramatic screenshots, and M will bring up your map. You also have inventory, crafting, and you have some basic stuff that you've already learnt. And then in your tech tree, this is the items you have learnt, the tech tree is very big, we'll go over that more. You also have your talents, you have general talents and solo talents, if you're paying solo a lot, pay attention to what you do there. When you start the game it's easy to get XP and basically everything you do, do it does get you XP so you make sure you pick up ferns, you pick up rocks and stones and you pick up sticks etc. All of these give you XP. If you come across stuff on the ground like food and carrots make sure you eat those. Food does give you buffs and oxide which you will found on the ground or in little blue ores you need that in your oxygen slot. Once you've got the raw materials, make yourself a stone pickaxe and a stone axe. Then start chopping stuff down, and before you know it, you'll have a level. Make sure that you get a campfire, followed quickly by a wood bow and stone arrows. Now if you see a bear, do not be afraid. Make yourself said bow and a ton of arrows from all the raw mats that you made earlier and then make sure you annoy that bear but in the early game only do that when you're close to a river which has some depth to it because you can turn this bear into a bear pincushion because it can't hit you in the water and then once that's done you get some excellent XP 
go and harvest it and make sure you skin that bear for the goodies and when you skin things it also gives you extra XP and ensure that you harvest the bones you're going to need those. Continue to pick up all the ferns to get fibre and before you know it you're going to have another level. Ensure that you kill everything you come across and you harvest it particularly for the fur and the meat those will all be useful and harvest those bones. Next up make yourself a bedroll, then a torch and then unlock the wooden building elements and ensure that you increase your health early on and then get to knocking down trees. Oxygen will still be an early game problem so keep on top of the oxide and get that into your oxygen space in your inventory Ensure that you kill as many things as you can and keep the trees coming down. And remember the top parts of the trees have sticks to them. That's a useful game tip. Not the bottom, but just the top parts there. And once you have enough wood, start crafting your base. I recommend a 2x2 two two to start with. Get those down on the ground. If you have them on the ground you won't need pillars, but you will need some stone and you will need more wood. The first weather event when it comes in won't be too much of a bother and in the meantime make sure you kill wolves which I also call XP bags. Ensure that you skin them because that gives you extra XP as well and then you'll have another level before you know it. Get back to your fireplace and when it's raining it will be suppressed at the fireplace but you will when it is up and running get some cooked meat which will give you good buffs. Get back to building Get your sleeping bag made and get the building pieces down. Tapping R will orientate your building materials and holding down R you'll be able to select the different options that you want to build. It always remembers the previous one that you've put down and before you know it you will have uh, the beginnings of a nice little base. Make sure that you clear the trees around your house because the first storm will often knock down a lot of trees and you don't want those landing on your beautiful, beautiful little base. It will destroy it. Exposure in the early part of the game won't be too bad, but later on in the game it could be pretty severe. And the corner pieces of the roof, orientate them, do one one side and then one the other far side. That's the easiest way to do it and then get your inclined roof pieces down. Sleeping bag down. Make sure that you hold the F in the middle to uh, make that your spawn point. Bandages, wooden hammer and a fire whacker, unlock those and also a drying rack. And in the talents you want to ensure that you focus early on on your use of the arrows and bow. Carry on getting all the mats that you're going to need like stone and fibre and then make yourself bandage, hammer, the drying rack all the basic essentials. If you have any wood left over make sure that you put it into wood piles and then your first day will come to a close. Day two you'll have some nice juicy meat and as I said before you can eat a variety of different meat to buff yourself up more and that will be very very important in the game. Drinking from the rivers will give you bugs from time to time, so you want to avoid that. Get piles of spare materials down, keep on top of the oxide, and you can of course carry creatures on your shoulders, or little ones like this. You, When you pick them up they will be attached to your belt. That's quite a cool little animation there. You can throw them on the ground and then harvest them. Remember, wood is your friend, and any excess make into wood piles. And as a little side note, you can kill the fish. Gives you a little bit of XP, and when you are killing animals, try to do it crouched in stealth mode. That gives you 2.5 XP. Journals. Journals are something that when you kill and skin creatures, you get an increase in the percentage of knowledge of that creature. The more that increases, the more bonuses you'll get. Uh, it's a good mechanic in the game, and a nice little side thing to keep an eye on. Skinning creatures get the materials and get the bonus XP. Don't be afraid of the bears, certainly early game do it in the water and then turn them into a pin cushion. 
then harvest them. Remember that under the water you have a spacesuit on, or certainly an air breathing equipment, and you can stay under the water as long as you want. The second weather event, well, it's a little bit worse than the first one, but it still won't be too bad, but it is best to hang around your base. An important thing I always recommend in the game is kill every single horse. The horrible things, and make sure you kill the babies. Now you have some good variety of meat, you want to keep on top of that to keep your, who, um, your health bath, I should say, your health up. Carry on hitting the various materials, the oxide and the stone, make lots of arrows. And then kill more creatures because that will give you the levels that you need. Before you know it you'll be level 5 and well on your way. Learn the bone knife. Learn the suture kit, you need that for deep wounds. Then get back to chopping down trees and make that bone knife. Don't forget bone arrows. And those go a nice little damage bonus and you've been collecting that bone for a reason. So put it to good use, hold down R so you can select the new type of arrow then get rid of the mowers. You can tame animals by pressing F on them. I'm just going to show you how to do it here. Harvest the mother in front of its baby baby doesn't seem to mind and then this is how the baby will just follow you back normally you would have a taming area here and you could tame it but put it out of its misery because you haven't quite got to that point yet early game you want to focus on your talents also into your pickaxe then get back to killing as many creatures as you can chop down the trees put the excess down and a little little tip here is that your fireplace can be used as a storage box essentially a lot of items won't burn in the fire so you can just put them in there and use it as a container if you want to if you can't find moa lying in the grass make sure you kill them and harvest them of course save your arrows knife the baby to death on day three get back to chopping down more trees icarus encourages you to do that Boost your health up, kill the horses, keep your health up again, kill pigs, and if you want to repair just press tab and then once the tab and you have your inventory screen up you right click on your hotbar and just click repair onto your items. Kill the XP bags also known as wolves, never be afraid of them, and you get bonuses from time to time because they sometimes come in groups. Harvest those bones. Mowers, they are fast and they can cause some quite big damage. Just be aware of that. Get that bacon into the fire, that'll give you another extra buff. You want that cooking up. Make sure you keep on top of your talents there. Do some sneak attacks on the various creatures and kill everything you can find to get more levels. Yet again don't be afraid of the bears just lure it into the water and before you know it it'll be dead. Take out a mower again you can see how fast they are and they skid along the ground quite nicely and your next weather event will be a bit more significant you are going to need more oxygen getting a bit low if it gets too low it'll cause you problems this weather event you can see already that the weather is a little bit more severe it will damage your wooden structure but it won't be too bad you could just leave it if you wanted to in the meantime keep on top of those talents and as i said you want to be boosting up your pickaxe your health and your combat your arrow stuff uh, that's your key stuff you want to focus on and you use your repair hammer to quickly repair the items on the roof then get back to killing wolves and I'm telling you, you kill a lot of a lot of wolves, you get lots of XP, you get lots of levels, and then get back onto the stone and kill any mower in the fading light of the next day. When day four comes around, you want to get right back and kill as many creatures as you can. 
and yes you'll be level 10. Level 10 is an important level because this is where you unlock the crafting bench which is going to enable you to make all sorts of new stuff. Now you will notice here that I have been saving my talent points for this. Do not spend all your talent points at once, only use them when you need them. You need a rain reservoir, you're going to unlock the oxide dissolver, the oxygen bladder, the water bench, the stone furnace, the anvil. You're also going to want the contact device, skinning bench, and a few other things. The iron pickaxe and Jesus I'm starting to lose track but you certainly want a longbow and you want to start looking at taming so you can unlock the textiles and unlock all the various things that you're going to need for taming there don't forget to get a saddle I almost forgot that gonna need that also upgrade the uh, uh, eye to an iron knife and you're going to want the taxidermy knife and the orbital exchange as well mortar and pestle is useful and then I decided this is where I'm going to build my new base because yeah I was an idiot and I didn't really want to build where I first started. A nice way to do this particularly when building across the water is to get your pillars down. Now here I just hold Y or press Y when you're looking at the structure and it will quickly uh, demolish but it will return it fully intact into your inventory. The building mechanic is quite useful in Icarus. Uh, there is weight, uh, so if you build items outwards without uh, supports underneath, then they will fall down. Hold down X to pick up things and quickly remove everything else by pressing Y. It's a really well, it's a really well done that mechanic there, and use all those various materials you've picked up and try and get them back down at your new base location. Pressing R will orientate items on the ground, get crafting item, get your crafting bench down and then start building in your new spot. The next weather event, well truthfully you don't want a big wooden base for this but I started down this path so I'm going to have to live with it. Get your roof inclines down. Start building the base, Get some. you want to get some top cover over so you can start building items uh, like crafting benches uh, down beneath, I had to pick my other one up or else they will get damaged. So fill in all the gaps and as you can hear things are starting to get damaged and this is what happens when you run out of oxygen. Uh, this particular, you can see at the top right that there is a strong wind coming in and they will damage your base so you have to keep on top of the repairing. Oxite, I needed this because my oxygen was running low, there is a better way of managing this but I'll show you that a bit later. Go back and repair all the items that have been damaged from the storm. It doesn't take long but it's just a bit of a hassle. This is reminding me that I do need to upgrade. Get your sleeping bag down at your new location. This is an oxide dissolver, this is what you want. Uh, you'll get an oxygen bladder and get oxide and sulfur within it and then you can start getting and sorting out your different oxygen problems. Skinning bench down and we want to get a rain reservoir down as well. Just like that you're on to day five so you get the uh, start crafting that rain reservoir. Put a little bit more of a front porch out. This will collect the water as it falls, uh, very useful, and make sure you can access it from the inside of your base, just saves a bit of hassle, and then deploy your textiles bench, and keep an eye on your talents and your tech tree. Don't forget a leather backpack, that will increase the slots that you have available for carrying things, and you're going to want a bone sickle as well in the early game, that'll make things a bit easier, cooking stations, and a couple other items are quite useful. Craft that bone sickle and then use it for what it was designed for. This makes harvesting and collection of fibre which is an important early game material just that little bit easier. Pick up your drying rack and go back to your previous base where you had all your other mats and just pick those up and take them back and then once you're back at the other base make yourself a leather backpack on your textiles bench and then get that down into your inventory over there and you will see that it gives you another row of items, um, inventory slots. Carry items back and put them on your skinning bench because if you uh, put them here you will get very, you'll get better materials when you do it here as opposed to on the ground with a knife. Now is the time to 
go looking for caves. Uh, caves are where you get all your ore. Now you can cheat and look at maps online and you'll find them pretty easily, but I decided not to do that. I was going to look for them the old school way. If you come across little herds of horses, make sure you kill every single one of them. If you don't want those things surviving, they're horrible. Carry on looking for caves. You can get a cave scanner, and if you want to play the proper way in the game, I recommend you do it that way. It's a lot of fun trying to locate caves. I thought one was there, but I was wrong. It draws you across the map, and that's part of the process, and it's part of the fun. Remember, you're going to need the stone, uh, particularly around this point, because you're going to get yourself down a furnace, where when you do find the caves with all the ore, that's where it's all going to go. Now, I was beginning to have problems here. You do not want to be in this situation where you've got a big wooden base and there is a lightning storm coming in. Hence, you will see I'm standing here with a fire whacker. I was fully expecting this to be set on fire. And it certainly is going to get damaged. You can see the damage icons coming up, so I'll have to repair it. But whilst it is a full wooden base, I cannot allow it to get burnt down. There is an urgency now to upgrade this base to stone. And night drew in. And then before you know it, we're on to day six. If you come across these deposits, remember them you will later on the game be mining these it makes things a lot easier and then absolutely of course i found myself a cave most of them that you're gonna have to dig your way down into them clear yourself a little path and inside of the caves of course you have cave worms they're pretty easy to kill and you can pick up most of the stuff that you shot at them off the ground but on the other side of the coin, sometimes you do get hit with their poison. It isn't too bad, but if you get hit by it too often, it will kill you. Just keep an eye on that. As you can see, underground you get this cave lung. This is one of the worst things in the game. If you stay too long in the cave, this will affect you permanently. Well, certainly for, I think it's about three minutes. It's really debilitating. You don't want that. In the cave, get yourself some iron. Remember you're using a stone pickaxe here, and this doesn't give you great resource collection. You only want to take enough until you can upgrade to an iron pickaxe. But keep collecting iron. There is copper, you don't need that yet. You can come back for that, and there is coal, which you don't need. And this is platinum, and you can see you cannot mine that with this primitive pickaxe. Get back to collecting more iron, and the cave worms do respawn to a degree, so keep an eye on that. They will pop up again from time to time. Once you're back at base, activate and get all that iron into that furnace, and it's way you are you're now into the upper tier of the gang, and you can also use it to store various items. On your crafting bench, you can see the anvil requires 40 iron ingots ingots I should say that's what you're going to be heading for and you are really really aiming for this masonry bench that's level 15 two levels away and that led to a horrible day on Icarus for the creatures I needed the levels and they needed to die that was my first level And then I was almost there, so I just chopped down a few more trees to get those last bits of a level. And then before you know it, you'll be level 15. That took quite a while, actually, and I slaughtered an awful lot of animals. Unlock the masonry bench. This will bring me up to a, enabling me to start crafting stone walls. This is what I really need to do. Get that masonry bench down. Make sure you get that anvil down. Upgrade your basic utensils like your knife and your pickaxe and replace them, uh, replace your stone ones. You will, but now once uh, you have the anvil down, you can make yourself a longbow. You want to get that onto your hotbar as soon as possible and then get on to making nails. Nails are essential for making stone walls. And then get to crafting all the various items that you're going to need to re start replacing your base. And then before you know it, day seven comes along. Now as long as you have the correct item in your inventory, you can use your repair hammer to replace and upgrade very quickly. 
It's uh, it's a great building mechanic. The item that you're replacing goes into your inventory slot, so as I'm replacing these wooden pillars, they are going into my inventory slot, and I am obviously building stone ones underneath. If I'm building a big stone base on top, I will need stone pillars underneath. If you put too much weight on top of them, uh, they will collapse. Meaning you do not want uh, lots of stone on wood rats, the whole thing can fall down. Keep on top of those talents there, as I said, get that pickaxe up. And then get back to the cave, because you will run out of metal pretty damn quick. And now with your better pickaxe, you're going to start crafting that iron, and then get back and replacing all the various items again. As a storm comes in, uh, you want to really move up the speed of replacing everything. Get that stone, start building those stone walls. Get the nails down. Keep replacing the wooden items. Do this with urgency. Get more stone. Keep replacing. You want to do this as fast as possible. Because as soon as your base is stone, you can leave it alone and you can go wandering on big adventures. Unlock the herbalism bench and health enhancement tonic early on. That is a good potion, let's use that word, that good tonic to have. And I'm going to start looking at tames here, so I'm making myself a, I guess you would call it a pen at the front of the base. Where I am going to bring my tames and store them safely. It's looking good and before you know it you're going to be on to day eight get the feeding trough and the water trough down the creatures are going to want those and now we're just going to quickly look at the contact device this is what's going to enable you to do quick missions you can do simple quests or bigger operations I'll start off by just quickly showing you the simple quests and a real easy one when you do these they will give you they will basically give you some money, a reward, and as you can see this is just basically to find a hidden locate, a crate which was quite close by and this one was really easy to find. Worthwhile doing because you can get all sorts of good loot out of it. So I would recommend you do a whole raft of these to quickly get some good loot and you get obviously as you will see there some bonus points and money. Get back to the cave and start harvesting all those other materials like copper and coal. Do a medium uh, simple quest this time and this is to kill a creature which isn't that far away. Don't forget to keep that iron up. This is a crazy wolf. You're going to turn it into a pincushion. Keep backing away. It has a nasty bite. It may kill you. But don't worry about it. As soon as it got drops, you will see the drop pod coming down with your reward. You get various choices for your rewards. I just needed some materials, so I selected all the ore. Now I picked this uh, alpha wolf up. I'm going to carry it back to my base. And the reason I'm carrying it back is I didn't have a taxidermy knife on me and I wanted its head for a late, later to put as a trophy on my wall. And this gave me a nice level up. That was excellent. Keep an eye on the talents. Uh, you want to be looking at uh, various things here. Mostly I'm looking at various ways of harvesting. I want to keep the harvesting bonuses up. Finish your upgrade. And then I can put the orbital exchange. Once I make an orbital exchange, I'll put that down. And you can have little drinks of water through your gap there uh, to your water reservoir. And then next thing you know, you're into day nine. The orbital exchange allows you to request items or to, if you've been harvesting exotics on the ground here, you can put the exotics here and they will be delivered to the station and give you points. You can also using the Orbital Exchange Request Equipment and this is where that workshop you built and research various items you can get them delivered to you. Now getting back to the contact device we're going to do a mission here. Now these are normally much longer, uh, you're normally going to have to go somewhere or do something relatively significant. This one was a scanning 
Uh, the, you can only have a, ever have one drop pod down at one time. This is a scanning mission, so I have a radar within the drop pod here for my next mission, so I'm just collecting that. And you can see the radar goes on your back, which it carries around, looks pretty nifty. And this mission is to scan these various locations, and it is quite some distance away from me. That's going to be a problem. So, I am going to have to get some mounts down. Make myself an animal bed, and then a saddle. Put the animal bed down at my front pen, which is not yet complete. I want a mower, kill the mum. Go up to the baby, press F on it, and it's going to follow you. All the way back, and it's going to sit down on that bed, and as long as you have food and water, it's going to start taming up. It's as simple as that. Get the pen complete to give it a bit of protection. And it will randomly wander off, so you want to keep it inside the pen and get some walls up and get some doors up. Get the food down, and it will start munching away doesn't seem to mind the weather and you want the water trough to be outside because it will naturally fill up with water and then you have your tame give it your own name spindle seemed appropriate kill any wolves that happen to wander close by and this I don't know why but all these baby mowers started turning up so <laughs> I just decided to tame one more get another bed down for it it needs its own little space and then you're into your last day Using that mower, we're going to set off on our first trek. Mowers are really, really fast and they can out sprint absolutely everything. As you're running around, make sure that you don't use up all its stamina. You want a little bit in case you come across a bear so you can out sprint it. But use this mower to rip across the terrain. It will slowly run out of food and water, but you can worry about that later. And here we were going to head across the desert. And it's about this time I was thought mm, I haven't really approached this quite right I probably want a stone base I had a little wooden base with me which I was going to plonk down but I thought I'd just do a little bit of a recce and I did come to a bit of a conclusion that I probably needed to head back and get myself some stone materials and then when I traveled and did this mission I was going to set up a stone base down in the grasslands where these other missions the scanning missions were fortunately on the way back I found myself a cave harvest some of the iron why not harvest some of the copper get rid of any of the worms And then go back to base. Finish taming up your other mower so you got a spare. Make sure you get that iron on and get it on the boil. And I did intend to build my base up around this rock outcrop in the middle of the river here. Building is something you really want to get into in Icarus. It is absolutely fantastic. You do want a decent sized base in Icarus because you will end up with a lot of different crafting stations and you want them to be in an orderly manner so you need some room to expand. Don't be afraid of the bear and there is a sidestep shuffle way to do it like this. You do that and you can kill most bears. Now I'm back into getting myself some wheat because I'm going to need that for my herbal brews. But the day is beginning to close out. And before you know it, that is what 10 days is like in Icarus. If you want to know what happened afterwards, I went out into those furthest grasslands and built myself a base, stuck a mower on top of it so it's safe from the creatures, put a scanner down, fought some baby bears and did fight some big mummy bears as well. And that was that mission done and there are so much more to do in this game it is a game that you will play for a long time i highly recommend it i hope you enjoyed this uh, i really look forward to seeing in the next chapter take care